Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. Thank you very much for joining me today. In today's video, I will discuss Bluetti's latest portable battery bank, the EB3A. I have been using the EB3A for the past two and a half months around my studio and home, but also recently on a Simpson Desert trip where the unit traveled with me for three and a half weeks through the hot Simpson Desert and over some very harsh corrugation. However, for full disclosure, I haven't paid for the unit. The unit has been provided to me by Bluetti for review and testing purposes. However, it is not a paid review. Bluetti won't see the review before you see it and have absolutely no influence about the content of my review. As always, I tell you honestly how I see it and whether I continue using the unit or not. I usually like to test products for six to 12 months before reviewing. However, with electric products and battery banks, I do make an exception. The reason is that they usually become obsolete after a year because they are going to be replaced by the latest model. And it's no point reviewing something which you can't buy anymore. So take into account that this is not a long term review. However, in comparison to quite a few other people who reviewed the unit, I have actually used, tested it and traveled with it. If any of the electrical products should fail after a while, I definitely will make an update and let you know. It's the smallest of the Bluetti units with only 12 amp hours or 268 watt hours. So how have I used the unit so far? I have actually used it quite a bit around my studio and at home. Actually, as I film, my camera is plugged in to another Bluetti unit behind you. So it just makes it very easy to charge or run my video gear wherever it need to be. I also have used it on my recent Simpson Desert trip and I actually started using portable battery banks on my trips around two years ago when I started reviewing the smaller units. And even though I have two 100 amp hour DCS lithiums in the car, which give me plenty of power, I still carry one of the portable units simply again for convenience because otherwise I'm confined to charge my laptop or everything close to the car. And uh, with the portable units, for example, I can offload my footage of my cameras or can work on my laptop wherever I like. That could be sometimes a hut where we're staying, where there is no power, or I set my table up under a tree or in a better position than right next to the car. So it just gives me more options. It's also nice if we have a rest day and we sit under a tree, I can still charge my Kindle and my camera gear and don't have to do that in the car. So let's first talk about the inputs and how I can charge the unit. The unit does have a 200 watt MPPT solar regulator built in. So you can charge it via a solar panel, which obviously need to purchase separately. I hooked up a 160 watt uh, solar panel and managed to get 140 watt in here, but that was not at the peak of the day and not perfect conditions. So I couldn't test the full 200 watt, but I read from some other people that you get around 160 watt in from a solar panel. You also have the option to charge via AC and from solar. So I could uh, plug the power cable in and then in addition to that uh, solar panel, and that would, I think, give me up to 400 something watt uh, charging power. But in reality, yeah, I don't know when you would have solar and AC. To be honest, I probably could do that actually in my car, use my inverter and then also plug the solar panel in if I really need to have it charged as fast as possible. But again, fast charging will reduce the longevity of the unit. In comparison to previous Bluetti units, you do not have an AC charging brick anymore, but the charger is actually built in the unit, which is quite handy because it was a pretty big charging brick and it means you don't have to take that anymore. So the built-in charger means you only plug in a regular power cable here 
and then you actually have three charging modes. You have the regular charging mode which charges with around 260 watt. Then you have a turbo mode which is supposed to charge up to 360 watt. However, the highest input I managed to get was 330 watt. However, that will decrease the longevity of the battery and the cells. So I would only recommend doing that when you really need fast charging. And then you have a silent mode which charges with around 85 watt, but that means the built-in fan will not switch on. These options though you can only select with the accompanying Bluetooth app, which you can download. Um, it's not something you can set on the unit itself, so you will need the app for that. The EP3A has a built-in fan to keep the unit cool when charging and also when you use it under high power. Let me show you how loud it is. So now the fan is on, on standard mode that is, and that is right next to it. You see the decibels, and let me put the microphone next to it. So it is reasonably loud. You probably don't want to have a charging next to your bed. But at least this unit gets rid of the charging brick of the previous EB units, which is this huge charging brick, which now you don't have to bring anymore because that's all built in to the actual unit. You can also charge the unit via a 12 volt cigarette lighter uh, plug in the car, which I did on my trip. So the Bluetti uh, EB3A also has pass through charging. So at the moment I'm charging my drone batteries over here, or my drone battery, my Mavic battery here. I'm charging my Fitbit but I also have it plugged into the cigarette lighter port um, of my Land Cruiser, which runs two lithium batteries, two 100 amp hour DCS lithium batteries. So I'm charging now with 83 watts. Mind you, the output is 115 watts because I'm using 220 volt here. But yeah, it has pass through charging, which uh, yeah is good. At the front you have a 220 volt outlet and obviously the unit has a built-in 600 watt pure sin wave inverter so you will have no issues running laptops or any more sensitive devices and run it or charge it from this unit then you have two usb a ports unfortunately they are not uh, qc3 so there are no fast charging ports and only charge with 5 volt or 3 amp that's a bit of a pity. However, you have one 100 watt uh, USB-C fast charging port, and that is great uh, to charge my MacBook or keep it running and charge my drones or anything which really requires high output charging. You also have a 15 watt wireless charger on top. And in comparison to the EB55, where it sometimes was a bit finicky to position the phone correctly, um, this one works much better and it's usually no problem to place a phone in the correct spot to get charged. You also have two 5521 barrel connectors. Many units have them, but to be honest, I have no use for them. I, I don't really know what I would plug in there, but good to have them. Maybe you need them. I had no issue running the unit close to the advertised 600 watt and with a constant use around the 470 watt mark the unit did run for 26 minutes before switching off. One of the big differentiation factors and why I personally really like the Bluetti gear is that they use a different lithium cell chemistry than most other portable battery bank manufacturers. The most other providers use NMC NMC has a higher density, however, it also has a few drawbacks. For instance, NMC is not as safe as LifePO4. If you remember mobile phones exploding and so on, that is NMC lithium chemistry and not LifePO4. 
I also don't want to scare Monga because really NMC is in tons of products you at the moment probably have. Drone batteries, phones, uh, solar storage banks all usually use NMC. However, one of the other disadvantages of NMC is the lifespan. So an NMC cell, for example, you can charge down to 80% anywhere between 4 and 800 times. A live PO4 cell, you can drain down uh, 80% around 2500 times. So live PO4, if the rest of the electronics um, doesn't fail you, should last you around three times longer than NMC. And that's one of the reasons why I really like the Blue Eddy stuff, because they use LFP and not NMC. Blue Eddy also has improved the display of the EB3A versus, for example, the EB55. With the EB55, you only could see the usage in increments of 20%. With the EB3A, you now have 1% increments. You also have a time to live, so you can see how long the battery will last under the current load. The unit has a built-in LED light with three different settings, low, bright, and you also have a SOS function. Let's talk about what I think could be improved on the unit. One small little thing, but initially, getting these handle out is sometimes a bit awkward because these here is just not deep enough to really get your fingers in and sometimes I really now it's easy from here but especially from the other side sometimes can be a bit awkward no big deal but uh, that would be something which would be nice to have improved personally I also would like to see two USB-C fast charging ports because I nowadays have a lot of stuff via USB-C the third thing is that the two USB-A ports, I really think they should be QC3 fast charging ports and not just standard USB-A. And the last thing is that you need to purchase the 12 volt charging cable for the car separately. I really think the unit price should be $10, $15 dearer then and uh, that should be included in the package. So let me tell you why I like and keep that unit. Wireless charging. I really like that you can just chuck your phone on top. I like the three different charging options, standard, turbo or silent, where you don't have the fan coming on. Very handy for me. I in particular like that it is live PO4 and not NMC. I like the 100 watt uh, USB-C fast charging port. I like that all ports and controls are at the front, so you don't have to have the unit uh, switched around, especially in the car. It is quite handy in regards to where I store it and still have access to all the points. I like that you can use it as a UPS and it has passed through charging so I can charge the unit and still then charge other stuff of that unit. I also really like that Blue Eddy eliminated these big bulky charging brick and that is now and that, that is now all built into this unit. So I only need a regular power cable to charge the unit via AC. So that are all the good things. So who is this unit for? To be honest, for my purposes, it worked quite well because in my car, as I mentioned, I have 200 amp hours of lithium. So I do not rely on this unit for any heavy lifting to run my fridge or stuff like that. I run some lights of it, my computer and uh, charge devices of it. Around the house and studio also no problem. I can run my laptop or multiple devices on it for quite some time before I need to recharge the unit and with the fast recharge times not really a big deal. However, if you are really looking for a unit which you want to take camping and that should last you for a weekend, I think you have to go for a little bit bigger unit, say the EB55 or even the EB70, because yeah, 12 amp hours is, is not a big unit. I have a 15 liter uh, Bushman Rody fridge here and I managed to run that fridge off it for 24 hours. That was at around 22 uh, degrees ambient temperature and the fridge set to plus four degrees. You, you could get away with it if you only run a small fridge uh, of it, say overnight, and you have some solar to recharge.
but overall conclusion for me I think I definitely will keep that unit here and yeah use it as I have been using it uh, take it on trips with me and also use it around my studio and home longevity wise obviously I can't tell you that much however it has been on a trip with me um, we had some pretty horrible corrugation And the unit has bounced around quite a bit in the car and yeah so far no issues if it should fail within the next few years i will definitely update you and tell you i also really have to give bluetti credit because every unit i get from them is improved they really listen to what the customers and people like me say and implement suggestions in every single unit so it's quite interesting if, if I look how the first unit looked I received from Blue Eddy and then each subsequent unit really is improving and improving and I think that is good to see I always like if companies don't sit on their laurels and you know lean back and leave it for example Gold Zero does that a lot there's not much new innovation coming um, Blue Eddy really does a brilliant job there and I really commend that yeah guys I hope you got something out of this review I want to keep it fairly short there are a few other reviews on YouTube which go into every detail and they measure everything um, that is a bit beyond my scope my review is more based around real life usage and yeah traveling with this unit as I mentioned this is not a paid review however I do have a referral link from Blue Eddy and look if you're in the market for one of the units why not purchase it through my referral link and that way I get a few dollars back which will help the channel because everything I do here is self-funded if you enjoy my videos I would also greatly appreciate if you could head over to patreon or buy me a coffee and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month you can really help me creating these videos for you thank you very much and I hope to see you along the tracks. Mm -hmm.